Blander from the Lifestyle website, julieblander.com, where I share easy ideas for entertaining home decor and so much more. Bear with me today as we are in our lower basement powder room. It's a little bit dark down here, and of course, the sound is not going to be the best, but I hope you take a lot away from this teeny tiny bathroom. This bathroom is kind of a passion project of mine, actually, because we have let it go for so long. When our kids were little, we decided that it wasn't ideal to have a bathroom where the kids had free reign because the only thing that lived down here in the basement at the time was a playroom. So we felt like it could be really dangerous. So when we replaced all of the floors, we just went ahead and removed everything from the bathroom and let it be for several years, six, I believe. But the time has come, our girls are growing up and we can trust them a little more now. So I decided it was the perfect time to finish this space and give it the justice that it deserves. This space adds a lot of function to the basement and I'm so happy to finally check this project off the list. Because we had so many projects this year, I decided to challenge myself and keep the budget to just $1,000. And guess what? I did it. I am so happy and I couldn't be more pleased with how it all came together. Let's take a look. One question I receive for every space I decorate and design is, what is the paint color for that room? Well, for this room, I chose to use Benjamin Moore Cloud White. It's light and bright with high LRB, light reflective value, and it feels warm. So it is the perfect color for this space, and it works really well with Benjamin Moore Swiss Coffee that lies just outside of the space throughout the rest of our basement. I love mixing up the colors from one space to the next just to add a little more depth and a little more interest. So that was the first thing that we did to add more light to this otherwise very dark space. As you can see, there are no windows in here and we actually don't have overhead lighting either. So we needed to make it feel as light and bright as possible while still giving it that cozy warm feeling that I like to have for all of the spaces in our home. Now I wanted to keep this space traditional to fit in with the rest of our home. However, I decided to take it a little more transitional and I'm really happy I did. I think this was a really fun space, it's beautiful, and it blends the two together seamlessly. To make this space feel a little bigger than it actually is, I used a tall skinny mirror because that draws the eye up toward the ceiling, which is also painted in white, just ceiling white. You can find that on my site at julieblander.com, but that way it draws your eye up and again, it makes the room feel slightly larger, gives that nice illusion. Another element that I wanted to incorporate to make the room feel larger was to have feet on our vanity. A lot of times I'll use a pedestal sink in a situation like this, but it's actually a little bit more of a deep room than it is wide, and I felt like it would just leave too much blank space. Plus, we really needed the storage for things like toilet paper and extra soap and extra hand towels and items like that. So a vanity gives that traditional storage, but having feet on the vanity allows the eye to go underneath all the way to the wall, again, giving the illusion of a little more space. To keep it budget friendly, I use a hardware store vanity and you can catch them on sale all the time. And when you do, they're several hundred dollars off. One of the bonuses of a hardware store vanity is that it's really accessible. You can receive them very quickly and install and move on with your life. Unlike our basement cabinetry that we ordered well over 16 weeks ago and we're still waiting on. So there is a lot to be said for the accessibility 
when you purchase from a store. Another great thing about it is, is that they have so many features like little cubbies inside and soft closed drawers and this one has both of those. And so it gives you a lot of additional storage and a lot of additional function without the extra expense. Take it up a notch and just elevate it a little bit. I use unlacquered brass hardware. I love the patina that it adds and the warmth and how it ages over time. So I felt like that was a fun way to kind of take this up a notch and make it feel a little more special than just a hardware store off the shelf vanity. And for the faucet though, I decided to go with polished nickel, mixed metals, just to add a little more interest because it is such a small space and there's not a lot going on here, just to add a sense of intrigue. So mixing metals does just that. And we have a toilet paper holder, same thing, it matches in the polished chrome. So I have brass sconces and brass uh, knobs but I have the polished chrome toilet paper holder and faucet. Between the two, it's a really fun blend and adds that interest. The vanity is a nice substantial size which fills the space to a T. It feels custom, although it is not. Now the mirror was a really great bargain, so inexpensive, and I just liked that it had a very, very nominal trim on it. So I wanted it to feel really sleek and really slim and give more space to the, for the mirror than the frame itself. Upstairs we used a chunky, heavy frame, and it worked really well in that space. But down here, again, we were limited on space and we were trying not to move any plumbing or anything else to save on additional expenses. So that allowed me to put a sconce on each side without crowding it too much as well. But the more mirror you have, the larger and wider and brighter your space will appear. So I wanted to use that nice sleek line to trim it out. Now the sconces were really inexpensive and I love them. They're just so fun. They're very elegant. They're a nice, warm, brushed satin brass and they have shades to kind of make that lighting feel a little softer. I hung them halfway up so they're right at eye level so they kind of double as art as well. Speaking of art, I selected two really inexpensive frames and printed a couple of pictures that I purchased from Etsy available for digital print. I wanted to keep the art really simple. I stacked it just to make a little bit of an impact to kind of overshadow the toilet. However, I wanted to keep the art itself pretty nominal and in the background. So they, I just chose two simple pencil sketches that I purchased on Etsy available for download. Printed them at my local FedEx store and hung them. Took less than 30 minutes and voila, done. Between the two, I believe the entire project for the art was less than $40. To accessorize the space, I decided to integrate a nice plaid wool rug. It adds a little cozy layer underfoot because we are in a basement, so I wanted that added warmth. While we do have white oak um, style luxury vinyl plank, it can still get a little chilly because it is just floating over the concrete floor. So adding a little wool adds that nice texture, beautiful pattern, and also feels warm and soft on foot as well. Plus, wool is really easy to clean. To accessorize, I just added a white and tan striped Turkish towel. Really simple, I love how they drape, and the fun little tassels just add another hint of detail in this otherwise small bathroom. And finally, a soap dispenser. I know it's the little things, right? But it truly is all in the details. To add another layer of warmth, I chose an amber glass soap dispenser. It just adds another touch of color in this space, 
and feel special while it's still really inexpensive. So I hope you enjoyed this bathroom tour. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I always love hearing from you. See my playlist for more beautiful inspiration that blends design and function.